I'm Grizz from hammockforums.net. I'm here to talk about the history of the bridge hammock and some innovations that have been developed at hammockforums.net over the last year uh, for people that are doing do-it-yourself versions of the bridge hammock. What differentiates a bridge hammock from gathered end hammocks is that the weight is carried along the edges of the hammock by cord or by webbing to the spreader bars that are at the head, thence along the suspension triangle to the top of the triangle and then up the T cord uh, to the tree. This idea of having the weight be suspended along the edges and thereby get a flat lay, kind of like a cot in the air, is attributed to Oscar Potter, who got a patent on the idea in 1902. But in his patent, he has the hammock standing up on, on poles, on stilts, and it's a real pain to get those uh, stood up. I've done it. It's, it's not something that you want to try and do. The idea emerges again in 2004 on a website for the Sydney Heritage Fleet, where there's a diagram that gives the dimensions of the body and the cut it and pictures that show it uh, with spreader bars and with people sleeping on it. In 2007, Jack Sarbetter demonstrated a prototype of what they now sell, called the Bear Mountain Bridge Hammock, at Trail Days. Uh, photos showed up on the internet, and the people at hammockforums.net uh, started talking uh, very briskly about this, uh, about this style of hammock. TD leapt to the fore and started showing how to build a bridge hammock uh, to the specifications that were on the Australian bridge site. He showed lots of pictures, how to cut the curve in the fabric, uh, where to find the, uh, the webbing that one uses on the edges, uh, where to find the devices that one uses uh, to connect the thing up. Uh, he's uh, been an advocate of using hiking poles as spreader bars. And so this is a good idea. He's got a, a monopole a hiking pole, sort of like this one, that's uh, straight through, which means that when it's used as a spreader bar, the force goes straight from one end to another. That's really key. To um, increase the power of the, the strength of the spreader bar, he advocates taking the thing apart and then sliding in a dowel rod to uh, add uh, further strength to the spreader bar. The forces in a bridge hammock that are on the webbing, that are on the spreader bar, that are on the suspension triangle, these are of some concern when you're building your own hammock. Uh, TD's a quant and I'm a quant and so we had an animated discussion that involves some trigonometry uh, to figure out just exactly what the forces in the bridge hammock would be. Uh, it was a discussion that some of the non-quants at hammock forums found a little bit amusing. Nevertheless, it, uh, it uh, was quite useful in uh, demonstrating that certain things would work uh, to be spreader bars. Uh, one of the things that uh, we determined, for example, was that the key things in determining what the forces would be would be the weight of the occupant, the length of the spreader bar, and the length of the side of the suspension triangle. And we determined that if the side of the suspension triangle was at least 75% of the length of the spreader bar, then the total compression force on the spreader bar would be no more than the weight of the occupant. And so that puts it in the realm of, uh, well, things like tent poles being able to work, for example. For many of us, the challenge was on looking for spreader bar solutions. Now, I use poles with hand-forming handles, and it was somewhat challenged to find a way of getting to use those poles to have the force centered as it needs to be. Well, I found a solution with webbing and with rings uh, that worked out uh, just fine. There were others that were interested in this, and they, many of them, uh, let's see, we had a Fanatic Fringer and Dutch and uh, Double Hammock and Walking Bear all found ways of attaching webbing to the, um, to the side suspension as cups for the uh, spreader bars, and that all worked pretty well. In fact, uh, Fanatic Fringer even went so far as to carve the top of his spreader bar handle so that he could get it through the ring. Another do-it-yourself solution was found by Hanging Out, who went to a big box place and got some aluminum uh, tubing there and engineered it to fit together so he can uh, break his down into a couple of pieces and pack it away quite nicely. Turkey Boy took PVC caps and screwed them right into the edge of the webbing. 
And so this was nice because it means that you can take a pole and just slip it into the end, end cap. But the hero of the hour was a Shrokan. He was investigating how one can use replacement tent poles as spreader bars, and he found that if you got a 5 8 inch diameter Easton aluminum pole, like these right here, they would be strong enough. I found a nice way to attach my spreader bars is when I make my hammock to have two loops of cord coming here off of the suspension and then a little ring of lightweight cord and slip the nub of the spreader bar right through the ring which secures it inside of the two loops and so it doesn't slip away. I spent a fair bit of time working out how to hang a bridge hammock without spreader bars at all using cord to pull out the corners of the hammock. This is pretty cool. But one's ability to do it depends a great deal on the soil because you have to sink long stakes deeply in order to hold them against the compression force. An advantage to the approach though is that you can in principle create a large hammock that's considerably wider than you can accomplish using only spreader bars. Another innovation was proposed and that was to take the spreader bar and move it from the head down the suspension webbing about a foot. What this does is put the spread right where you want it at your shoulders where you're widest. And so for a given spreader bar you get more spread or for a given amount of spread that you want you can use a shorter spreader bar. So this is something that uh, Walking Bear incorporates in his hammocks and uh, something that I've had in some of mine. Making end caps has always been a bit of a chore. You cut the body, you sew in the webbing, you make the suspension, you go out and you hang once, you've got a nice straight lay. Everything's great except your stuff falls off the end. So you say, all right, I've got to do an end cap. Now TD took the easy way, which is to cut a piece of fabric and then tie it on or attach it some other way. Um, I tend to want to be uh, tidier than that, so I have sewn mine uh, in often. My first ones were ellipsoid or parabolic, um, computing just how much uh, edge you have to match the edge of the, uh, the body is a bit of a hassle. So I have found that a simple triangle works uh, pretty well for the foot end and is easy to compute. A triangle is not going to work very well though at the head end because you're wide here and you don't want a point down at the, uh, the base of the hammock. So uh, Turkey Boy had the idea to take the hammock body and extend it past the spreader bars when you cut it and then somehow fold the extra fabric back up to create uh, the end cap. So that's a great idea and is one that uh, I've used uh, right here, slight modification to his, uh, cut it on a triangle here and put in some channels and then just run the suspension line uh, through these 